Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Kent City Council workshop. Today is July 7th, 2020. This is Council President Troutner. And welcome to anyone that is joining us today. We are now broadcasting our workshops. So um, you can watch them live. They will also be on TV 21 and the YouTube channel. So people can go back and catch up if they've missed it. So welcome. We have one item on our workshop agenda today. And that is Paula Painter, who is our finance director, is going to present the 2021-2022 biennial budget review. So Paula, take it over. It's all yours. Great. Thank you, Council President Troutner, members of City Council, Mayor Ralph, and uh, those of you in attendance today. Uh, today is a big day. It, it was the official budget kickoff for the 21-22 biennial budget. We started that um, earlier today with all the departments calling them together, uh, presenting the budget calendar and spending some time talking about what this uh, budget cycle is going to look like for today or for this for this year. And for as many times as I've been up here speaking with you guys lately, you know that um, our budget situation isn't status quo um, by any stretch of the imagination. We definitely have um, um, opportunities to grow and expand and to, to learn new things as we're navigating through this um, pandemic and its impacts on the budget. Um, recently, we completed uh, as an organization a budget reduction exercise as we anticipate revenue losses related or as a result of COVID-19. And um, it was uh, about two months ago, has it been that long already, month and a half ago, where I brought that presentation to the city council and shared with you all the budget reductions that um, we were implementing um, as we were looking at 2020 and some of those budget reductions, many of them carried over into the 21-22 budget process. Because we had done that exercise um, during April and May, um, what that did is it put us a little bit behind um, where we would typically be right now for our 21-22 biennial budget process. Typically at the time we were working on our reductions, that was the time we would have actually started budget kickoff. So we've lost a couple of months and we're quickly trying to pick up speed and gain, um, gain some ground so we can actually put a great document together and provide um, um, uh, opportunities for all of us to engage with one another to make sure that we're meeting the needs that that we need for our community and for our organization. So, um, so we are starting obviously a little bit later than usual. The um, items that were reduced, those were rolled forward into our baseline budget from the expenditure side of the house. So, um, all of those numbers you're not going to be seeing tonight, but I can speak a little bit about that. But what I'm going to start off um, just kind of walking you through is what is our budget going to really end up looking like? And what I can tell you now is that there's a lot of unknowns. And I'm sure that you can recall from some of the presentations I gave earlier that the revenues are a little bit dif difficult to predict um, because of the timing constraints that we run into um, related to that. So, um, for example, our sales tax, there's definitely a two month lag. So for the activity for the month of April, we would just now be seeing that that information in June. So we're starting to get some of that information in now, which is great. B&O tax, now that is a tax that's collected on a quarterly basis. So we're really not going to see good numbers on that um, until this month. Uh, second quarter is due at the end of this month. So as we start closing out July, I think that we'll have a little bit more information to be able to help us um, in the review of our revenues and kind of where we're going to anticipate seeing those revenues come along. 
So just one second here, trying to get my PowerPoint to jump ahead. So what I've done here is I've put in front of you what we call our governmental funds and our governmental funds, um, these are the, a lot of the funds that we were looking at through the budget reduction exercise. And I know we spend a lot of time talking about the general fund. And in fact, the next slide I'll show you is going to just be, well, what does all of this governmental funds revenue really mean for our general fund? So we'll talk a little bit about that as we're rolling through. Um, there's some things that I, I can easily bring to you or your attention that are definite things that are going to be happening with this budget um, related to the revenues. And then there's some other things that are still unknown. And so as I'm put presenting this information to you, I just wanted you to be aware that these numbers will likely change. I was trying to choose the right word. Um, I. Um, some of them are probably going to stay pretty consistent, but as more information comes out and we're able to solidify what this may look like a little bit firmer in 21-22, we'll have to be making some adjustments to that. Um, going through and looking at our property tax, you're going to see the 2020 budgets at $30.4 million. Um, that's going to be bumping up to the $31.5 million mark. And that is really pro the property tax in and of itself tends to be a pretty reliable revenue source. Um, it even during the Great Recession continued to grow at a regular pace. So what you're looking at there is 1% um, growth in our property tax with what we are allowed, plus new construction. There's also in there a little bit of truing up. We had under budgeted property tax in 2020. So we are truing that up a little bit as we're looking at the 2021 and 2022 forecast. With our sales tax, you can see our current budget is at 29 million, yet the forecast for 2021 is at $26.6 .6 million. The primary driver in that is the fact that um, during 2020, we received um, six months of our annexation sales tax revenue. So in 2021, that will be going away. And so we'll be seeing a reduction of just over $2.2 million in sales tax revenue um, moving forward. The um, utility taxes, there's um, a few things that were, are going on with our utility taxes, which are changing. Some of this you're not necessarily going to see in these numbers, but with our utility tax, we have a portion of that that was allocated to go to our capital resource fund. And that money was to be used to pay off some internal debt that the city had. And at the time that the debt is paid off, which is in 2020, it will be paid off. Um, that money then would shift back to the general fund. So what that's going to mean is the general fund will recognize an additional $1.59 million in revenue uh, related to utility tax. That is not an increase in, this, in, in um, the collection to the city as a whole, but it is shifting its use. We've also have noted um, the increase that you're seeing there, which is about $700,000 in utility tax. Um, some of that is due to the fact that our solid waste budget has been under budgeted for multiple years. So we are trying to get that trued up a little bit. But in addition to trying to true that up, we're also truing up a couple other of our utilities and that would be our electric and our telephone, they have been continuing to come in under budget. So we um, are reducing those budgets down to put them more in line with the reality of what we tend to collect in those areas. Another shift that will be going, uh, that will be happening will be um, related to the cable utility tax. And with the cable utility tax, um, the general fund has been receiving a portion of that utility tax um, to, uh, it, for the annexation. Well, now that we're no longer having to track those annexation expenditures separately, we're no longer needing to 
either track the revenue separately. So that revenue will be going back into the IT fund and that would be for about $150,000. Um, with the B&O tax, we um, continue to have um, the same amount of B&O tax forecasted for 2021 that we do for the 2020 budget. Um, in 2022, you're going to notice that there is an increase that's expected, and that is due to a rate increase that would uh, go into effect for the square footage tax, and that uh, is effective January 1 of 2020. And um, real estate excise tax, this is one you can see in 2018 and 19, we have um, brought in far more than we've budgeted, but we purposely do not over budget that real estate excise tax. Um, so we did bump it up a little, 3.4 um, is just, um, a little low. I mean, all of it's fairly low, but we really want to be conservative with this because real estate excise tax really is one-time monies. And if we start budgeting the whole thing instead of waiting to use it for projects when we're ready, we run into um, um, issues with that. So this seems to be the most appropriate way to manage those um, the real estate excise tax dollars. And finally, our other taxes, they're fairly status quo at this point in time. Um, uh, again, with state shared revenues, we're still waiting to see what happens with some of our state shared revenues, and that includes our fuel tax. I know this year in 2020, we're expecting to come in below what our budgeted expectations are. However, you know, with 2021 and 2022, there are so many uncertain things, and you're going to see that being found not only in our state shared revenue while we wait to see what the state decides to do with the state budget to balance their, their budgets. But also you're going to see that we're going to run into probably bigger discussions as we know more related to our um, other, other um, revenue sources like licenses, permits, charges for services. Are our parks, when are our parks going to be back open and what is that going to look like? All of those all of those things are going to help drive what those revenues end up looking like in the end. Um, you will see though the big drop in the state shared revenue for 2021 and a large portion of that has to do with the fact that um, the uh, streamlined sales tax mitigation dollars were vetoed this year. So not only are we not receiving as much as we had intended for 2020, but going into 21-22, that's another three and a half million dollars worth of revenue that um, the city will not be receiving. We're, we are continuing to um, uh, anticipate reductions in our miscellaneous revenues and that miscellaneous revenues include things like our interest income, although our investors continue to do a great job, depending on how much we have to use up some of our fund balance navigating through all of this, we will have less cash to invest. Um, and so therefore we will be seeing some reduction in the miscellaneous revenues as well. Do you guys have any questions for me related to these governmental fund revenues? Council Member Boyce, do you have a question? Yes, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Paula, help me understand the B and O tax. I mean, for 2020 and 2021, the forecast is 14.90, and we know there's a lot of business that's not doing well. How you how you come up with that number? It seems like it's high to me for some reason. Well, the number that's in there at the 14.9, that one, that those numbers have not necessarily been adjusted for what the market truly is going to do. We didn't bump it up. Right now, we're waiting to adjust that until we can get in some second quarter B&O tax revenue because we have really very little basis to be able to project that. Um, right now for first quarter, um, 
B&O tax did come in higher than we had anticipated. So we did leave it like this until we can see what second quarter will end up looking like. So you feel pretty good about that number or you just put it as a placeholder right now? That is truly a placeholder. In fact, um, Council Member Boyce, many of these numbers are placeholders until we can, we don't want to keep reworking the numbers. So we're trying to wait till we have a little bit more information before we adjust them some more. Okay, I think like some of you made some adjustment to some, but you left that one seem like it's a lot higher, but okay, I, yeah. I get it. Yeah, that one, the B&O tax uh, for 2021 didn't have a specific driver. Many of the others that you see adjustments to, they had specific drivers that are known. So for example, with sales tax, we know we're no longer going to receive the annexation sales tax any longer. So we purposely reduced it by that amount as well. And B&O, we had originally projected them to continue to grow. Um, I do think that that 14.9 we had budgeted for this year, had this been a normal year, that may have been under budgeted. Okay, got you. Thank you, Paula. Yeah. You're welcome. Council Member Thomas, did you have a question? I unmuted you because I know... Um... You no. Did you have anything? Or are you good? I'm good. All right. Anybody else have any questions before Paula moves on? All right. Thanks, Paula. You're welcome. Okay. So I am now going to go to this other screen. It looks just like the screen we were on, but the focus is on the general fund. We always like to talk about what's going on with the general fund. Um, and again, you can see where the um, shifts are happening. Um, property tax, again, we did, it, we did clean that up because that was under budgeted for this year. We anticipate our regular growth. Um, sales tax, the reduction there again, that is um, no longer receiving that annexation funding, but yet you can see the utility tax looks like it'll be a growth. And the reason for that is that shift from the capital resource fund into the general fund, bringing that up um, by an additional um, almost $1.6 million. So for expenditures, I know that oftentimes we talk about, you know, how, what does our bottom line look like? Revenues, less expenditures. And, you know, I just shared with you that revenues right now, they're, they're an estimate. They're going to change um, once we have some more information. Expenditures, we are just about done uploading all the expenditures. However, they too are subject to change. And the reason they're subject to change is there are some things that, um, we don't know at this point. So all of our union contracts have um, some sort of COLA um, associated with them and they are tied to CPI. And that CPI is June CPI and that comes out in July. So we're expecting it within the next week or two um, to be able to know what that figure was. But just to be able to have a plug in there, we did apply temporarily a 2% CPI for 2021 and a 25 for 2022 um, while we await to see the numbers. Now, we will go in once we have the revised numbers and we will adjust everyone's um, salary and benefits accordingly related to that. The other thing we don't know for sure yet, because we have to wait to have our actuarial studies done and conversations had about that, is what would our medical increases look like? Um, we did put in a plug of 3.5% for medical for 2021 and 5% and for 2022. And for supplies and services, Every year, as really a standard as part of our budget process, we try to increase those by typically inflation, primarily because of the fact that many of these line items are tied to, to things that we do and those costs do continue to go up. So there are nominal amounts of increases to the supplies and services lines that um, are included in, in this budget. 
Um, other things that really aren't known at the moment, and it will be interesting to see what the state decides to do about this. We haven't heard anything or seen anything yet about the retirement rates going up in 2021 and 22 at this point. And if it does, then those will affect some of our numbers as well. Um, but we're holding tight to see. I don't know that the state would be overly driven to to raise those rates at this time because that would impact their budgets as well. But that's me making an assumption. So we'll have to wait to see how, how all of that pans out. Um, so this is where we're at um, with, with the expenditures to date. Do you guys have any questions on, on that? Council Member Boyce. Thank you, Madam Chair. Paula, I mean, I understand the medical usually anywhere from 2.5 to 3.5 growth per year. I know these are assumptions, but why 5.0 for 2022? Our original projections actually for both 21 and 22 that we've been using for a while has been at that 5% level. So we, I didn't feel comfortable using 5% for 2021 because I don't really see that. Um, Three and a half percent. Uh, really, I, I was it it without the data. It just kind of felt like a safe number to give us a little bit of a buffer. Should they go go up more than that? But that is a good question, and and that will end up um, adjusting as we get more data as well. Okay. But really, our fund itself looks healthy. I do know from um, prior years at, at the city, they, they preferred to do a little bit of an increase, even on years where they didn't necessarily need one, primarily so that we don't end up with a 20% increase like that's happened in the past. Okay. All right. Thanks. Madam yep. Chair. Yep. Go ahead, Councilmember Thomas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Paula, actually, Bill, I I think if anything, it may end up being low. You know, medical. We don't know what's going to happen with medical and the elections and everything else. So I think she's taking a pretty good approach here, and I think it's a conservative approach, to be honest. All right. Anything else? Yep. Anyone else have any comments or questions? All right. Go ahead and continue. Thanks, Paula. You're welcome. Okay. The next screen, guys, is going to be really busy. So we're going to take it real slow. So I'm going to start by apologizing. Um, don't you like it? It's very colorful. There's a lot uh, of. <laughs> here. Here. Oh, um, my gosh. <laughs> but. But ultimately, I wanted to have one spot that you guys can look and see what our budget calendar will look like. So I'm going to be happy to send this out right afterward, and then you guys will have this at your fingertips to be able to look at what, what the plan is. So, so today, here we are, July 7th. We're at budget kickoff, and so it's been an exciting day getting everyone all geared up. Now, our departments... Um, Starting tomorrow and over the next couple of weeks, they're going to be reviewing their budgets and preparing their budgets for us, making modifications where they need to do that. Um, two weeks is not a lot of time, and I'll be the first to say that. So I, I want to first um, give a real big shout out to all of my peers who I know that you've been given a huge task, and I really appreciate um, everything that you guys are doing to make this work. And I'm hoping that um, even with this condensed timeline, all the work that we've already done is going to help to make this a little bit easier. Um, but, but departments, um, um, they have their two week window before all of a sudden we start having meetings with finance. Some of the departments will have a little bit longer because truth be known, we don't have to have their documents until they're ready to come down and sit down and meet with us. And meeting with us gives us an, under, an opportunity to go over any of the questions they have. How can we help them? What are some of the things they want to do? Making sure that things are feasible and, and workable. Then um, we're looking at uh, 
It used to be in the past that every department met, met individually with administration, but this year we wanna use the same model that was used during the um, mid biennium budget process where they were able to get together and talk about how they wanted to expend those capital dollars and as a leadership team, um, hear what the others had to say. And we even found through the budget reduction process that it was really useful to have an opportunity to pull the leadership together to talk about budgets because sometimes our budgets have impacts on others that we don't recognize. And sometimes they there's things that are going on that are maybe bigger than um, what's going on in front of us in our department. So it's good to hear that and be able to have some understanding about what people are facing. Um, and then uh, after that, it would be decisions would have to be made and then we would have the first council meeting where we'll have our first public hearing on the biennial budget, followed by the um, the presenting of the budget on September 29th. Before I start going too much further into this calendar, there's one element that I'd at least like to bring up or have a conversation about tonight, and that is um, engaging the council. And I, I, I'm not certain if the council would be interested in an opportunity to do a little mini budget retreat where we can get together and have some conversation about what is important um, to the council or what questions you might have um, based on everything that's going on between um, not only with the COVID-19, um, but the other, the other things that are, that are really um, heightening awareness about what's in, what is included in our budgets. And so I wanted to throw it out to council, to the council members to see if that would be something that you guys would be interested in. And knowing our calendar, maybe we can have um, some discussion if you are interested about where that might fit. Well, I think that's a great suggestion. I know in the past we've had like we've had many retreats. Um, I think we had one in October last time. Looking at the calendar and information that is going to be coming in from departments and, um, you know, with our public hearing on the 15th, what is the suggestion that you have as far as timing? Um, is there any time in particular where you feel like we would have enough information to generate more questions? Or do you think prior to meeting, um, with certain people that it would be better for us to meet? You know, I, I would think that we definitely would, I would recommend doing it before we reach the September 29th date for certain. Um, I think that in August, we should have a little bit, we will have more information about some of those revenues so we can have some of that revenue conversation. I think if we tried to push it too early in July, we're still going to not have as much information that you guys might find valuable. Council member Boyce, do you have any comments about this? No, I'm just gonna agree with you, uh, Madam Chair. I think it'd be nice to do, and I guess I'll leave it to Paula when would she think it'd be the right time to do it, but I am in agreement. I think it's, it is something that we probably should do, and I think it'd be worthwhile. Great, council member Larmer. Yeah, I also uh, would really appreciate that. I think that'd be um, very helpful uh, given the climate uh, and questions on everyone's mind. Um, I feel like last time we went through the cycle, I feel like we had something in the summer. Um, I remember, you know, I think we had a, a, a fall retreat and a summer retreat. So yeah, I'd just be curious where we might be able to fit this in this summer. Okay, Council Member Fincher. I'm in agreement. I'd like to have a meeting also. All right. So I think we kind of have a consensus that um, it would be a good idea for us to be able to get together and, you know, ask any questions as we move um, forward in this process. So maybe, um, maybe I can work with Derek and the mayor we can, and Paula, we can kind of figure out what time we think would be best and um, put some dates out there. I think that would be great. 
That sounds good. Um, one of the things on the 20, September 29th, when we start bringing that message forward, uh, where the, the mayor is going to be presenting her budget, we'd like to follow up um, doing that special council meeting on the 29th, followed by a, a workshop. And, and I, I don't know, especially if we can have a little mini retreat where we've talked about a lot of things, it would be fantastic if we can plow through as much information about the budget on September 29th. Um, because of the timing of some of these um, other things that are going on um, between elections and uh, I think National Night Out fell on one of the days that I was trying to use for budget. Um, I did throw out potentially maybe having to grab an October 1st date if we're unable to get through as much information on the 29th. However, we would also have all day um, uh, on the 10th, which is a Saturday, to be able to go over budget as well. So we have some options there. I threw in an extra day just in case we felt we needed that additional time. Um, and then in October, we would have um, the October 20th workshop for um, additional conversation to be had about budgets. This is where we can handle any of your requests, answer questions, um, then followed by our second public hearing on the 20th. On the 27th of October, we'll be making um, at the workshop the final decisions related to budget so that we can be prepared to go to the Committee on the, of the Whole on November 10th with the recommendation to send it to Council on November 17th. That would allow everyone to have the rest of the year to enjoy their holiday and not um, be concerned with budget. Thank you. I think it looks like a great calendar. And I just want to thank you again. I know Councilmember Boyce has said it multiple times, but being able to be a part of this process um, is really helpful for all of us. So all of these opportunities to um, see what's happening and be able to ask questions, I think is really a great idea. Any other council members have questions about the calendar? I don't have a question about uh, the calendar. I have a general question, Madam Chair, if I can ask, if you don't mind, please. Go ahead, please. Hey, uh, Paul, can you help me? So when we um, did our adjustment and we, during the time that we was gonna, a few people gonna get laid off, we made some adjustment. So and we made some adjustment uh, with the uh, fund balance and so on. Did we take into consideration, I thought we were looking ahead in uh, 21 and 22, anticipating something that may or may not happen. Is that a true statement? Because I'm thinking of something totally different. So um, I'm going to see if I understand your question. So I'm going to try to answer that for you here. Um, so ultimately, when we were going through the reduction process, we did make reductions to 2020. Um, of that, about uh, some of that, 5 million of that carried over to 21-22. In addition to that, um, we were ensuring that by carrying over those reductions to 21-22, that we would be addressing that structural imbalance um, that we typically um, face every year um, with our budget cycle. So th that is something that we're not looking to address unless something goes completely sideways that we're not anticipating. Um, I don't think that that's going to be an issue as we roll forward. Was that answering your question or did I misunderstand? No, no, no. You did answer it. I just take it one step further. So do you anticipate us um, uh, making any more adjustment to the fund balance or did we take care of that during the reduction process we did early on? That's At this point, I would say what we did early on so long as everything keeps as it is, we've already addressed it. We will be eating into our fund balance as we go throughout the year. Um, there's uh, $5 million of the fund balance beyond what we already had budgeted and planned to use. So it's about $8 million of fund balance of general fund that we will be using um, this year. And that's what we talked about. 
and that should be all that hopefully we will need to tap into because um, um like I said, unless something really goes goes sideways on us. Okay. Thank you, Paula. All right. Any other questions about this calendar or anything else that Paula's talked about so far? All right. All right, so ultimately that is the high level overview of where we're at with the 21-22 uh, budget. That's kind of our path forward. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys have in general about budget um, or concerns that you might have. Um, but that was all that I had for my presentation for today. I'm sorry, I have one more question, Madam Chair. Council Member Boyce. So what we just went through this year, uh, the reduction in adjustment, right? So, so I know the department is preparing and reviewing the budget for the July 8th to 22nd. Now, based on the reduction that we already have done, um, what did that work look like? I'm just curious. Oh, for what they're going to do during 8 through 22? Um, so there's different, there's different things that they're looking at within a budget. So they have an opportunity to... Um, move their budgets around so long as it nets zero. So for example, maybe they want to manage their budget to different detailed line items. So they have opportunities to do that. The other thing they have an opportunity to do is to look at what kind of contracts that they have where um, there's additional fees. They want to make sure that we're having conversations about the fact that, hey, I only have $100,000 budgeted for this, but this contract was supposed to grow according to this term and it should be 200,000 and I'm making up information here. Mm -hmm. But th those are the, the kind of things that they're looking for. There are some departments where, where it's like for example, utility funds where they, it could be that they have a major something that has to go happen and they're not being faced with the same challenges as maybe the general fund. So those are the things that people are, are, are looking at. Okay. okay, thank you. So Paula, right now, the next time we will hear from you is the council meeting on September 5th, but we're gonna work on getting a mini retreat in between now and then, correct? Yes, okay. that is correct, yeah. Okay. All right, anybody else have questions or comments for Paula? Madam Chair. Go ahead, Council Member Thomas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Paula, did I understand Bill's question right? So uh, we're gonna be dipping into our general fund reserve. Is that what I'm hearing? Like 8,000? Yeah, if you recall, um, when I came back in, was that April or May, um, and I had a, a, a chart and it showed how we were, co we were covering our $15 million budget deficit, that $15.7 million, right. okay. part of that was coming from the general fund, fund fund balance. And we'll eat into that as we go through the year. It's not going to be in one fail swoop. We'll just take no. it out. Yeah. So what is our balance now on that account? Um, of course, you'd ask me right at the moment. We started the year with $34.4 million in the general fund fund balance. Uh, yes, but now we're down to, as of uh, May 31st, down to, or June 30th, I mean. Yeah, we haven't closed June, so I couldn't give you that number. Okay, how about May? All right, hold on just a moment here. I think we were going on like $27 million. Oh, it's $31 million right now. Excellent. Thank you, thank you Michelle. <laughs> I didn't have that number in front of me, Ms. Michelle. No, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you very much. All right. Any other questions for Paula? All right. It looks like that. I is have, oh, Council Member Thomas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Paula, this is not in regard to our city, but have you talked to surrounding cities, how they're doing like Des Moines and SeaTac, uh, Auburn? You know, our... um, we've I've been in touch with a lot of the cities um, surrounding us. Um, I've, 
right now we're all kind of working on our budget. So we've been a little bit quiet over the last month, but prior yeah. to that, um, we all are making reductions of some in some form. I'm really grateful for how the city of Kent has made their reductions. Yeah. We took our time. We were a little bit slower and very thoughtful about how we did it. And when, when we did this, we addressed not only the 2020 immediate issue, but also we handled the structural imbalance that we always face. So we weren't having to go through this again. I do know um, of another city who has had to do several rounds of reductions. And even with their 21-22 process, they're having departments reduce again. So it's really, it's everyone is handling it a little bit different. We're all kind of in the same spot. We continue to um, exchange um, where we're at and what our assumptions are. And I think that um, we're all seem to be getting to the same place. We just kind of take a little bit different route getting there. But it gives me some peace to know that we're all kind of landing in the same realm. Well, I, I, if I may, I think we learned a big lesson back in 08, 09. And you were, I believe you were still here at that time before you left. And uh, I don't think Bill and Dana were on board yet, but we took a pretty big hit because we really hadn't been prepared like we are now. And I'm so proud of your team and uh, some of those before you that have allowed for this to uh, have a little, I uh, quote, a little nest egg, if I may. Um, that's exciting. I'm most interested in the city of Des Moines because if they get a point where they're going to go under, I want to annex them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can find out for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, you, you are correct. We're definitely in a much better space than we were when we went through the Great Recession. And I was here and that was um, really tough. And yeah. I think the, the leadership at this city, the council that all uh, work to, to um, build these fund balances and making the choices that they've made with their budgets. They, you guys all deserve a lot of kudos for that because it has made it um, far more bearable than it could have been otherwise. Well, you're right. A lot of that is uh, dependent upon our leadership that we've got now. Uh, Bill, Dana, you know, the council, uh, yeah, we, uh, we learned an important lesson, and I, I'm so, like you said, I'm really proud of the group that we've got and what we've done so far to prepare for this. Thank you for everything. Thank you. All right, any other questions for Paula? All right, great job tonight, Paula. Thank you so much for that presentation. Yeah, thank you. And it looks like it is a short workshop this, this evening. That was all we had on the agenda. So thank you to everyone that was able to join us. We will be back at seven o'clock for the council meeting. So we are adjourned. have the same drainage system it's working very well our operations folks are very happy and we will eventually see that increased program uh, once we're able to get back into some of the more active recreational use uh, that's been put on pause due to major partnership between uh, city of kent and the ymca uh, with the building project coming online obviously the ymca very successful facility in its in its opening months but also having the landscape that supports uh, that that building in the park um, you know major improvements were made combining two uh, park parcels that were separated before now combined as one Morrow Meadows Park did an off-leash area a multi-use sport court that includes both tennis and basketball some open lawn spaces um, a, a pretty uh, 